Hello everyone and welcome to Victoria's Cantina. Today we're having a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nations SH Figure Arts Star Wars Luke Skywalker. This is Luke as he appeared in Star Wars A New Hope and it's a figure I've been very much looking forward to for the last several months and I'm very stoked because from the last two Figure Arts figures that I purchased, Darth Maul and Mace Windu, which we did review, I absolutely love them. I don't think anybody does six inch figures better than Figure Arts is doing them right now and for that reason, this was definitely one to get. So as you can see from the packaging, it's the same that we saw with the other two figures. Basically just a small black box. It's got a window so you can see inside. It says Star Wars SH Figure Arts Luke Skywalker. There's one side of the box. There's the other. And there's the back. So you see a couple of images of the figure. And uh, it looks like this one right here is uh, pretty nice. He's just holding his lightsaber. And then the other one is just kind of a standing up in a desert sort of landscape sort of thing. I think that looks really, really cool. There's uh, the two heads that you get and <laughs> the accessories in the bottom of the box right there and uh, underneath, that's what you get. So I'm really looking forward to getting this open. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And when we come back, we will take a closer look and see what this is like. All right, you guys, and here is young Luke out of the box, and I really like what I am seeing here. This is just so realistic for a six inch scale figure, which it's really hard to make something so lifelike and so detailed in that scale, but they really accomplish it at Figure Arts, so this looks really cool. You get all of the accessories that you see here. There's quite a few of them, and then you get a instruction sheet that's uh, in Japanese, and uh, luckily I have some pictures so that I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Uh, it's a little bit involved, it looks like, so we're going to go ahead and get all that checked out, but let's go ahead and take a look first at the figure. Figure Arts really did a remarkable job bringing about all of the sculpted detail that you see here. It just looks incredible. And it doesn't really surprise me. I mean, based on what we saw with the other Figure Arts figures we looked at, uh, it was clear that they have a real passion for doing highly detailed figures. And uh, this is no exception. Very nice proportions on the figure. It looks very much like Mark Hamill's body shape, you know, thin guy with a big head of hair and uh, the clothing too. I mean, everything just translated very well to the figure form. Colors look nice, just an all around solid looking figure. Go ahead and give you a close up of the figure and I mean, just look at the face. The face looks incredible, very lifelike, very realistic. It really looks like he's just staring back at you. Oh wow, this is just fabulous. I mean, from every angle, it, it really looks so, so solid. Very nice profile. Uh, the skin tone is very lifelike, just the way that they painted it. Um, I mean, it's almost like a Hot Toys figure, just scaled down to six inches. Uh, you will see that the hair, while sculpted very nicely, uh, is actually two pieces. You see that long seam right there. I don't really like that a whole lot, but you'll see in a little bit why that is. It doesn't look that great though. Uh, the hair itself, while it is shaped and textured very nicely, um, it's kind of painted in sort of a bronzish looking sort of paint that doesn't really look all that realistic just because it's so shiny. I mean, it almost gives the illusion of greasy hair. Um, I mean, as, as remarkable as the figure looks, uh, that hair, you know, does kind of hinder that aesthetic just a little bit. I'm not quite sure why they chose to go with this kind of shiny sort of paint on uh, Luke. I mean, if they would have done something a little bit more subdued, I mean, it would have looked better but i mean it's really hard to argue considering how good this figure looks uh, but you know just little things like that could have made it a better looking figure rest of the costume is just fantastic look at his chest area i mean it's just painted very nicely great flesh tones and uh, it even has a little bit of sculpt to it you know it's not just flat and then the shirt very nice uh, the sculpting detail on it is very nice looking it, it looks like a pretty realistic draping the way that it comes out from the belt and you know on the bottom as well and uh, the arms nicely textured there on his sleeves at the back it look, just looks fantastic i really really like that there's his other arm right there you can see that he's got his hands there in closed fists and a very nice matching skin tone to the rest of the uh, facial and neck area and then he's got his belt, which really looks good. I really like the buckle on there. That's got that metallic paint to it. Uh, the brown of the pockets also looks very nice. Nicely sculpted, nicely painted. You can see that he's got his lightsaber clipped onto his belt. 
And there are some slits there on the side of his tunic in order to allow for posing. So that's why that's there. Uh, the legs look quite nice. I mean, it, it really looks like he's been running around in the desert. You can see like the desert sand uh, dust there around his legs and uh, even at the bottom of his boots. Um, as far as the color goes, I guess it's pretty close to what we saw in the film. To me, it feels like it's just a little bit off, just a little bit off. I, I kind of feel like this should be a little bit more gray. And the same with the boots. I just feel like, although they look fantastic and are very nicely weathered and detailed, it just seems like the color is a little bit off for me, a little too orangey. But, you know, that aside, uh, they look very good. Nicely sculpted and uh, very nicely textured. I really, really like what I'm seeing here. Love that dirt detail on his boots. I mean, that just looks exquisite. Underneath, no peg holes to be found. And uh, I mean, just aesthetically, they really knocked this one out of the park. It's, it's a fantastic looking piece. Now, in the way of articulation, there is quite a bit of it. You get a ball joint here at the head. You also get a ball joint at the neck. So what that's gonna allow you to do is achieve a very wide range of movement. There's the neck right there, but we can also move the head. So you can look down quite a bit. And uh, similarly, we can make him look up like that. You can also get a tilt to him and uh, you know go side to side, very nice. You have ball hinging at both of the shoulders, no obstruction, it works very well. You have ball joints at both of the elbows. They can fold very nicely. You can kind of rotate them just a little bit, not a whole lot. Pegs here at the wrist. It's basically a peg that's on his hand and that goes into a socket, but it still kind of functions somewhat as a ball joint because you can kind of move it around, not just rotate it, but you know, you can kind of move it in and out, up and down a little bit. So there's that. You also get a ball joint here at the torso and it's got some really good movement to it. I mean, you can kind of go side to side, front to back, what have you, that's really nice. You get ball hinging at both of the hips, which enable him to do a split. And uh, he can probably go a little bit more if, if we push it, but that's about as much as I'm gonna do it. Uh, he can go front to back, uh, not a whole lot. I mean, it is a little bit hindered because of the lower tunic, but I think that it's probably gonna be enough. You can also rotate both of those hips up there like that. So very nice articulation there. He's got a ball hinging at both of the knees. You can bend him back quite a bit and uh, you can sort of rotate them just a tad. I don't think they're proper ball joints in the traditional sense, more like bends, but I really do like how they conceal the joints like that, at least from the front. And then here at the feet, you do get uh, your ball hinging with rocker swivels and then an articulated toe on both of the feet. So there's plenty of articulation to be found on this Luke figure, and that's gonna allow you to get him into all kinds of really cool poses. So then there's this. <laughs> <laughs> it's an alternate head, and depending on who you ask, um, it either looks okay or it doesn't look that good. I mean, it's just kind of creepy, if anything. And then the, the way that they made it so you have to take him apart to, to get it on there, ugh. I really wish they would have just done an interchangeable head. But anyway, if we look at the instructions here, it basically shows us that we need to take the head apart from the hair and yeah kind of a mess. I don't really like that. An interchangeable head would have been ideal, but let's just roll with it. So we're going to go ahead and pull the head off like that. Now he's headless Luke. And then if you'll recall, I mentioned that seam earlier. Well, that seam is there because we need to pull on his two halves in order to get that out. This is what we are left with. It's very odd, but you know, like I said, let's just roll with it. We'll go ahead and take this creepy looking head right here and we'll go ahead and just peg it in place. So that's in, and now he looks absolutely hilarious. So we need to go back to our other Luke, take off his hair, and there we are. There's the front piece of the hair. And then there's this head right there, the normal looking one. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the crazy looking face. We're gonna take the front of the hair and uh, we're just going to plug it in just like that. Wait, is that right? That looks so odd. Anyway, let's just roll with it. So we'll go ahead and connect both pieces of the head just like this and push it together. 
So let's go ahead and grab the body, and then we'll put this new head in place. And <laughs> that's what we're left with. I don't know, I, I kind of feel like something's not right. It just looks weird. So there we go, now the hair is on correctly, and uh, I'm just not feeling it, you guys. I mean, it doesn't look quite as bad now that I've tweaked it a little bit, but it still doesn't look that great. I mean, it looks like some dude that's had like a load of plastic surgery or something. Just a very like, weird waxy looking sort of aesthetic i don't know the lips look too puffy it's just very strange so we're not going to leave this head on him moving right along we have his lightsaber that's just clipped onto his belt we're just going to pull it like that and uh, you can see there's that little pig right there and the other side of the saber just has a little slot and you just connect them like that uh, so looking at the hilt itself they did a really nice job with it it's not 100 percent film accurate because uh, it is missing the bubble strip that should be right here. Instead, they give it more of the Empire Strikes Back sort of aesthetic. And uh, not to mention the fact that this knob should not be there. It should be the glass eye that would have been there in A New Hope. And uh, this back part right here is accurate because it doesn't have the metal grommets like an Empire. So uh, it's not a very film accurate lightsaber hill, but you know what? I'm probably the only person that's going to notice. <laughs> so uh, for what they did, it does look good. It's very nicely sculpted. It's very nicely painted. It does have a, an aluminum sort of look to it. And the black bits are painted very nicely as well. You can see that there is a hole there at the top. And we're going to go ahead and show you the blade. This is the lightsaber blade that you get. It's just a blue blade. It's got a peg at the bottom, as you can see, in order to connect it into the hilt. And uh, it's nicely colored. It's like a very light blue. Uh, it looks pretty much on par with what he would have had in the film when his saber wasn't white or wasn't green. So, uh, <laughs> But I think that this looks quite good. And um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how this connects. So just like pretty much any lightsaber with a removable blade, you just peg it in place like that. And then you got the full lightsaber. Quick comparison here for you of the figure arts lightsaber at the top along with the Hasbro Black Series lightsaber on the bottom and um, you know they both look really good it's close I think the figure arts has a better overall sculpt and looks a little bit more realistic uh, but the color of the blades uh, is a little bit different amongst the two it, it I wouldn't say one's better than the other I don't like how the Hasbro one has such a skinny looking blade uh, in that regard, I think that the Figure Arts one has a nicer, more robust blade and, you know, nice colors. So overall, I would say this is a better lightsaber. So then we have the removable hands. There's two right hands and two left hands. Uh, you get an open hand, which uh, looks pretty good. It's even got fingernails and stuff on it. Very nice. Then there's the matching left hand right there. And then we get uh, two fisted hands. We get a left hand, and it's actually like for the lightsaber and uh, right hand right there too. So to switch the hands, we're just going to pull on the one that comes in there from the factory, the fisted hand, and we're going to replace it with this other hand right here. This is the one that you can use for gripping the lightsaber. And, and do note, you wanna line it up properly. It's not gonna go, like just go in like that. It, it does go in at an angle. So you don't, you don't wanna break it, so just make sure you're putting it in correctly. You'll hear a clicking sound, indicating that it is in. And uh, if we want to take off the left hand, it's going to be the same thing. Just pull it off like that. And we'll go ahead and put the open hand on this one. And again, just line it up because, you know, these are each, they each go in differently. And then you get the helmet and this just looks excellent. I really like this. Uh, it looks great. It's got some very nice color. Some very nice weathering there on the blast shield. Nicely painted red details on there. Uh, it just looks great all around. Um, so this is kind of a complicated piece as well because as you can see there is a head in there, at least part of a head. So in order to get it onto Luke's body, we are going to have to pull it apart just like with his heads. So just like that and that's what you get. So now we need to pick one of the heads and before we go any further, I'm not going to use this head. I'm not going to use that. I just don't like the way that it looks. So we're going to go ahead and take all this stuff apart once again, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and pull the hair off like that. And I'm going to take the blast shield right here. We'll just use it in here. And 
that'll be the shielded head and there we go it is in and then we'll take this and just kind of push it in place like so and now we have his head under there and you wouldn't even know that he's smiling so that's awesome and now with that in we'll go ahead and replace this onto the body just like this push it in um, one thing though is that this helmet doesn't seem to seal 100% uh, once we have that head in there. You can see that it's got some gaps on it. I don't quite know what that is. As far as I know, it seems like I did everything 100% correctly, but there's still a little bit of a gap in there. I don't know if we're going to be able to get rid of that completely, but uh, that is still visible. All right, so I went ahead and took the crazy looking face out of the helmet. I put the normal one in there and I was able to get it to seal completely flush. You can see that it is completely sealed now on both sides. So that's really good to know. If you want it to uh, be completely sealed, you just need to use the regular Luke Skywalker head. And then there he is, ready to undergo training with Obi-Wan. But wait, there's more. We have one more accessory. We also get the training remote. And uh, as you can see, it is permanently attached to this blast effect. And the remote itself looks really, really good. It's got a hole right there. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it does. And then it's got the blast effect, which looks incredible. I mean, just look at that. Very nicely detailed. Basically some orange with some blue. And the cool thing about this is that there's a little slot right there in the blast effect and you just feed it through his lightsaber. And that allows for an absolutely incredible aesthetic. I mean, this just looks so cool. I mean, it's such a simple accessory. I mean, I don't see how Hasbro couldn't do something like this pretty inexpensively. Um, but, you know, it's really cool that Figure Arts did it and that they included this with this figure because I just think that it looks so fun. I mean, it really looks like he's in action against that training ball and, uh, you know, like he means business. I mean, that's just so, so fun. That's just so inventive. And uh, it's great to see them bring that sort of a thing to uh, one of their figures because oh, I just love that. I just absolutely love that. And uh, you can move it around, you can reposition it however you want. So, you know, you do have a lot of display options with this figure. And uh, having him with the training ball, I think, is one of the best choices because uh, it just looks so great. And of course, is very reminiscent of that very famous scene aboard the Millennium Falcon in A New Hope. All right, you guys, and now a comparison of the figure arts A New Hope Luke with the Hasbro Black series A New Hope Luke. And uh, I mean, there's really no comparison here. I mean, the figure arts just dominates the Black series version. Uh, now, let's be fair. These are two very different figures meant for two very different uh, markets, I guess you could say. One's a $20 figure. The other one is uh, quite a bit more expensive. I got mine for $55, which isn't that bad, but it's a more expensive figure. It's an import, and uh, it's a lot more detailed. You get more accessories, better articulation. Um, but for what Hasbro did with the Black Series one, I do like it for what it is. It's not one of the best Black Series figures, and it doesn't hold a candle to what Figure Arts has done here. Of course, you have the soft goods on it, which uh, a lot of people just don't like. I think they did an okay job. It drapes pretty well in his body, and uh, I think the colors that they got for the costume are very nice, but you know, just seeing it next to the Figure Arts Luke, it's just really hard to reconcile uh, having the Hasbro one on my shelf anymore because this other one just looks so, so good. I, I do think that Hasbro did a very nice job with the color of the pants in particular and the color of the boots. I find them personally to be a little bit more accurate to the film, but the Figure Arts version, you know, it does its own thing. It looks like this is a character that's walking around the desert sands of Tatooine, and you can see that very apparent on his clothing which looks like it's worn and his boots have sand on them. It's just a much better realistic aesthetic. And then when you look at them up close it just really reinforces how awesome Figure Arts is and while Hasbro can do some really great things in Black Series, I doubt that they'll ever do anything that looks as great as what we saw here from Figure Arts because this is just remarkable. Here's a comparison of the Figure Arts Luke along with the Figure Arts Mace Windu and the Figure Arts Darth Maul. Each of these figures is equally realistic in my view, but I think the Luke is even better than Mace. 
uh, in terms of that sheer realism and authentic look. Uh, Maul is just incredible, of course. Uh, one thing I do like about the Luke, too, is that he has a more natural-looking lightsaber blade. I don't really like how Mace's blade gets kind of chunky, like toward the midsection, toward the bottom. Uh, it's more flared. I think it looks a lot better with Luke and a lot better with Maul. But in any case, these three figures look fantastic and they look amazing together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. This is the Bandai Tamashi Nations SH Figure Arts Star Wars Luke Skywalker 6-inch scale figure. Overall, you guys, this is tremendously good. I cannot emphasize how much I like this figure. I mean, it just looks absolutely astounding. And Figure Arts is exceedingly surprising me with just how awesome their figures are getting. And it just it seems like with each release, they get better and better. Now, this isn't a perfect Luke. There are some issues I have with it, notably the removable helmet, how complicated that whole process is, and taking the faces apart and the hair and all that. And then the hair, of course, glistens a little bit too much. Other than that, I really don't have any qualms with this figure at all. I haven't had any problems getting the hands off and on, and it just feels like a very solid, durable figure. The articulation is nice and tight, and I'm not having any issues getting him into some pretty cool poses. Yeah, the joints could be a little more fluid in some areas. For example, you could do more of a split, or you know, his shoulders could move a little bit more, but it's perfectly adequate, and even at the price I paid, uh, I'm really happy with it. Yes, you're gonna pay more for a figure arts figure, but I mean, it's totally worth it. I mean, just bringing in the Black Series one, and not to knock on the Black Series one too much, because like I said, it's not a bad figure for what it is, but it just doesn't hold a candle to what Figure Arts is doing with their Luke Skywalker. If you're a fan of the original Star Wars film and a fan of Luke Skywalker in particular, then you owe it to yourself to get this figure. Uh, if you love six inch figures, this is gonna scale perfectly with anything from the Black Series, and it's gonna outshine pretty much the best figures in that line. It's just so detailed, so realistic, great articulation, great accessories. The interchangeable helmet is cool to have as an option though I'm not a huge fan of the other face that you get. It just looks a little bit weird. But you know what? Just don't use it. Just leave it with this head on there or put the other face in the helmet like I did. You'll never have to see it again. The training remote is an excellent addition. You just really get your bang for your buck with this particular figure arts figure. Some of them are lighter on accessories. This one's got a lot of stuff. So you can spend a lot of time just futzing with it and trying out new things. And it's just fun to play with. It's just a very well-rounded package. And as much as I like my Darth Maul and as much as I like my Mace Windu, I kind of think I like Luke better than those two. Like I said, the fun factor is just really high. And this is a figure that's making me really happy to have. It's just fantastic on every level. So if you want to pick up this figure, I got mine on Amazon.com. I paid about $52 for it, which considering what you're getting really isn't that bad. It's an astounding figure, one of the finest six inch scale figures in my collection. And if you're on the fence as to whether or not to go this route, then I say definitely get it. You will not be disappointed. All right, my friends, if you've enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as always, I want to thank you for watching Victoria's Cantina. Till next time, my friends. Bye-bye.